Hey guys, the Kitchen Fairy here and today I have a recipe that is a bit different. It's not baking, it's not cooking. Well, it includes cooking as well, but it's not exactly for a dish. Um, I'm trying to show you how to ferment cassava. Uh, in Indonesia, we call it tapai singkong. And with the same method, you will be able to ferment rice as well, glutinous rice. And you will, the end result, you will have a sweet um, cassava that is tender and soft, that is perfect for uh, dessert. You can uh, serve it as is or chilled from the fridge, uh, or you can also use this uh, fermented cassava for baking. Um, I'll show you. And I have actually shared quite a few, uh, quite a few of um, recipes, baking recipes or cake recipes that is using fermented cassava in my blog. Um, but this is today the video is to show you how to ferment the cassava itself. I'll see you around. So to make this fermented cassava, um, I have four large uh, yuca or cassava root that I will have to skin them. You can slice them as is or you can leave them whole um, as so without slicing it, uh, but just skin the skin away. So for, for example, for one kilogram of cassava root, you will be needing one round of yeast for making fermented cassava. There's a, what is it called, um, specific yeast. You cannot use a baking yeast, but a specific yeast that is actually similar to Chinese rice wine, ye rice wine yeast. So, I have used Chinese rice wine yeast. You would, um, you you can use that as well. Um, it's available in Chinatown or in Asian grocery store usually. And you may you may be able to hear some noises in the background. I am listening to town hall. Um, on Discord at the moment, uh, it's quite important, but I also want to cook. So, anyways, one kilogram of cassava root, skin it, and then you will need one um, one round or one uh, ball of rice wine or cassava uh, yeast. Um, for Indonesian. Indonesian brand you can find it online or uh, Indonesian store but otherwise if you aren't able to find the Indonesian yeast you can use Chinese rice wine yeast a ball for a kilogram so let's skin this first for the cassava you want the ones that are white and nice looking cassava um, fresh cassava would be better but in Canada it's hard uh, to find fresh cassava, they are all of course imported from Asia, especially Thailand and most of the times um, they are already old, hard and not good and it's not always easy to choose them uh, at the grocery store because um, unless they look rotten, you can't really tell because they are all waxed to prevent them to spoil easily but yeah uh, you want cassava that is still nicely white and not dark and here and there or old so this is an example how uh, cassava seemingly perfect from the outside and the inside is totally bad already so you want to avoid this but you can't really unless you slice them 
and only then you find out that it's already bad so from the cassava i have i can only use three which it should be good already now that i've sliced my cassava i'm gonna give them a quick rinse and we're gonna steam them for about 20 to 25 minutes so you want a cooked cassava but not super tender cassava so about 20 to 25 minutes should be sufficient so now i'm ready uh, for steaming why you don't want the cassava to be too tender or too soft because once it's cooked and then cooled down a bit and you spread the yeast then you coat them with the yeast uh, you will ferment them for a couple of days right and the yeast will activate and it it will produce a super super tender moist and super soft and uh, juicy uh, fermented cassava that's why you want to cook them nicely but not too tender so about 20 to 25 minutes so now that the cassava are already cooked and cooled it's totally cooled so you wouldn't kill the yeast when you sprinkle it so after you steam them you have to cool them to room temperature totally cool to the touch uh, we're gonna crush a ball of yeast it looks like this so one ball is enough for the cassava i have today so you can either uh, grate this uh, yeast ball or you can crush it with pestle and mortar mortar <laughs> i said mortar holy moly you want it to be completely smooth and if it needed you can also um strain it is it straining when you apply it to the cooked cassava now i'm gonna use tupperware but you can use any container you prefer or you have uh, best is if you lay some banana leaf but if you don't have it will work as well i have in the freezer but i don't feel like laying with banana leaves um, i sprinkle a little of the yeast on the tupperware and then we're gonna lay them like so so we're gonna layer them this is the first layer and then we're gonna sprinkle with some of the yeast And then we're gonna layer it with the second layer. So we're gonna repeat this step until all space used up. Now that the cooked cassava are layered and sprinkled with um, yeast, we're gonna close the lid and we're gonna ferment it in warm area not even warm area is fine uh, but like kind of dark area like above your fridge or uh, above a cabinet in your kitchen um, in a day it should be fine at least a day and a half if not two days your fermented cassava will be ready so we're gonna check back in a day and a half I'll see you soon now it's been more than a day this is two days exactly we're gonna check what the inside looks like oh, let me a couple more days I'm gonna give it test it's getting there but it needs another date since so this is the third day i'm gonna i could smell it already when i open the 
pantry door the smell is strong and so nice yeah it's definitely ready now soft and tender yep oh juicy out already so nice do you see this so that's what mm, yum i just tasted it so yeah that's what i should mention it's depending on your yeast um sometimes one and a half days uh, sufficient already uh, most of the times two days but in other cases it takes three to four days until you see or could smell the strong uh, fermented it smells sweet uh, sweet smell that you can smell it when uh, the fermentation is done and ready like this uh, if only the video could catch the smell it's really nice um, so yeah this was three days Oh yeah, the other one is ready as well. Oh, nice. Soft and tender. Mm. So yeah, after it's ready, you can store them in the fridge. Um, why it's nice to, ferm to ferment cassava? Um, supposedly any fermented foods, they are much healthier healthier like kimchi or tempeh or anato um, but this it serves as dessert it can you can mix it in very nice um, cold dessert or use it in baking uh, for cupcake or any other type of cakes uh, you can also coat them uh, in flour and then you fry them as a fritter, you can use this uh, fermented cassava in many things. It's just wonderful. Besides the smell um, and the tenderness when you touch them, you can also see like this area. I'm trying to zoom in, but I don't think I can. Uh, anyways, if you, if you can see they broke down like that, the texture then you know it's ready I'm gonna try to flip the recording to show you from the bottom of the container uh, you can see how some of the texture um, there's like breaks apart I'll show you then you can tell that it's ready as you may be able to see here but there's a little bit of steam from the uh, warm yeast as you can see there are many lines those are when the fermented cassava really um, it means good that it fermented nicely they they sort of produce those lines as if they are broken apart here as well so yeah it's nice <laughs> 